uh, or I guess maybe afternoon for a lot of you. It's great to meet you all uh, virtually. Hey, before we get started, I want to I want to want to thank the folks over at Channel Futures for inviting us on today's call. I know they have a lot of uh, choices of who they could pick for participants on this call, um, and we really appreciate them them choosing us. I also want to thank everybody who's who joined this call, who, who took the time out of your day to dial into this call. Uh, you guys, I know, have a lot of people and and. Um, products and, and uh, things, you know, buying for your time as well. And we really appreciate you guys taking the chance on, you know, giving us the time and taking the chance on Granite today. And I promise we will do our best to uh, make it time well spent. So thank you again. Um, as Rick mentioned, my name is Mike Ferry. I'm the VP of Epic Solutions at Granite Telecommunications. And I guess for about the next hour, the plan is to do a quick review of, of the POTS replacement marketplace and really more specifically how Granite plays a pivotal role in that arena with our patented Epic Edge uh, pot replacement solution. I did throw in that word uh, patented on purpose. That's going to that's going to be one of our important differentiators that we talk about kind of throughout the uh, process. So um, before we get started, I'm, I'm sure that most of you are, or at least hopefully most of you are somewhat familiar with Granite, but for those who might not be, um, I did want to take a moment to maybe provide a quick overview of Granite and then maybe even talk a little bit about the relationship between Granite and, and Epic and kind of how how that relationship started, how it came to be, and wh where we are today, right? So, again, Mike Ferry, I'm actually one of the origi original Epic guys, um, and I'm really happy that I, I could say I'm part of this, this great Granite team. Uh, me, personally, I've been in the telecom technology space for probably really actually over 30 years <laughs> and full disclosure, I really was, I was familiar with the name Granite, but really didn't know much about Granite until we launched Epic. Um, but I can tell you, I've learned a lot since then. And uh, we have been playing very, very close attention since that, <laughs> since that first moment when we met the Granite guys. Um, so anyway, looking back, I, I guess I would say that, you know, it's really hard to believe I wasn't more familiar with Granite and I definitely should have been, but uh, I guess we'll say is, is in, you know, in, in summary, Amazing company, and uh, super glad to be to be part of this organization. So again, just co you see the, the the screen, a lot of different things. I'm just going to cover, just going to kind of cover a, a quick broad brushstroke. You know, tell you a little bit about Granite, right? So first, we were founded in 2002. Um, we just had our 20th anniversary last year, right? And our you see it on the bottom. It says our CEO says this all the time. We're just getting started. You know, steady growth. You can see my mouse moving up and down the screen, right? Uh, we are actually, believe it or not, the largest aggregator of voice data products in the country. It may be even the world. I'm not not sure about the world and the world marketplace, but I think we have more telecom stuff in, in the U.S. Than, than most of the places in the rest of the world, right? We're mostly known, uh, again, for those who know us, we're mostly known as those pot slang guys. But honestly, that's really just kind of scratching the surface of all the different services that Granite actually provides. And, and our, our channel managers can talk to you guys about that um, yeah, but, you know, at a different time. Uh, top line revenues, he said right in the middle of the screen, 1.85 billion. That was 2022. Uh, I think it's a really good, really good chance that we're going to surpass the, you know, in fact, we're expecting to pass that, that elusive $2 billion benchmark in revenue for 2023. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, it doesn't say this one on the screen, but we are, this is, it's an interesting one. And I think it plays, it'll play a part in some of the things we discuss, you know, going forward, but we are actually both AT&T and Verizon's single biggest customer, right? So what that means is if, um, you know, when AT&T and Verizon, you know, look at their, their revenue at the end of the month, or they look at their accounts receivable at the end of the month, you know, and they, and they sort them by, by volume, we are actually the biggest bills they send out every single month, right? So what, the reason that's, I think it's important is because we, we do have a, a, a lot of, it shows that we've got a lot of credibility with those companies and a little bit of leverage that maybe other companies really wouldn't have in that, in that regard, right? Um, we're best known, I think. Anyway, for our uh, for large multi location you know, retail customers, right, and and doing business in in the Fortune 500 space, you know, just a little fun fact, I guess. I would say, um, currently 87 of the Fortune 100 companies are actually granted customers in one one uh, you know some some shape or form, right? Um, it doesn't really say on this on here either, but I think this is sort of important. We're not a public company; we're actually a privately held company. In fact, we're owned by by a single gentleman. Um, we we have uh, zero debt, right? I think is super important, right? So we you know we're going to be able to stand the, the test. We have stood the test of time, but we're going to continue to be able to stand stand the test of time. You know, we've been literally been profitable every quarter since our inception. And like I just said a second ago, we're owned by a single gentleman. His name is Rob Hale. Um, for if you guys know him, uh, he's a pretty amazing guy. If you don't know him, definitely worth a a, a Google search, right? Pretty pretty amazing uh, a guy. Like I said. Um, he's done some amazing things in our in our business, and I can be honest with you, he's probably still the hardest working guy in at, at Granite. You know, he, he actually <laughs> sits out in the cubicle in our Quincy, 
headquarters office with all the other sales guys. He goes on sales calls, you know, literally flies all over the country to go on sales calls and, and, and support the team. So pretty amazing guy. I think honestly, though, just one, one little quick segue. If you were to ask him what he's most proud of, I would say it's probably, you know, all these things are, are great, but it's Granite's philanthropy, right? We've been able to build a $2 billion He really, not, not so much me, but the company's been able to build a $2 billion revenue or organization and still be recognized as one of the most charitable uh, organizations really in America. Um, so, you know, great testimony to, you know, again, the, the culture of, of Granite and kind of what, you know, what makes us, I, again, I think what makes us special, right? Um, you know, just uh, for example, just last year alone, I think 2022, Granite donated over $50 million to, to various charities, all, all great causes, right? So that's what, about a million dollars a week, and it's going up. Um, and, you know, just again, something to think about down the line, you know, we love partner participation in, in, in these things as well. And um, Danielle and some of the folks on this call can, can talk to you a little bit about <laughs> the great things we do with our partners and again, all, all for charity, right? And then, of course, um, Recently, or I shouldn't say not recently, actually been two years ago, on June 1st of 2021, Granite acquired, uh, acquired you know, our little company called Epic. Right? So uh, also, I'll just stay on the subject for a second, right? Epic, just quick on, on Epic, E-P-I-K. Um, there's a lot of, <laughs> I've got limited time and I can talk a lot, so I won't go into the, all the, the details of how we came up with that, that acronym, but we were a standalone company. We were founded in 2017, um, you know, again, up a handful of telecom, uh, you know, telecom professionals have been in the space a really long time, right? Uh, we we're founded in, Or in Orange County, California, which is actually where I'm speaking to you from right now. We, we although Granite's, uh, Granite's headquarters is in Quincy, Massachusetts, we do still maintain a local California presence, right? This is where our founding team is, and this is really where our, our, our developer developer team is. So we do have a full lab, you know, again up in San and in Cal California. Uh, Epic as a, as a company, right? We we actually I or I anyway often use the word that we were we we're or the, the phrase that we're a purpose both a purpose built company and a purpose built product, right? You know, and and we were really again those those purposes were specifically aimed at a couple of very common challenges that pretty much every company um, faces when they're moving from you know a, a uh, an on premise hardware software based solution to cloud based solutions, right? And again, you know, bear in mind, I'm talking, we're, we're talking mostly about the telecom space, but uh, in reality, there's, you know, we're talking more more about the, the in, you know, the entire technology space, right? I mean, we've seen a, a, you know, mass movement from, you know, for the past dozen or so years from, you know, from on-premise solutions to, to cloud solutions. Even the, even the, the, uh, the services we're talking about right now, the, the PowerPoint I'm looking at, you know, and all, all the stuff on my computer, right? It used to be we had a CD. I had to keep it, keep it safe somewhere in my desk with a serial number so I could have, make sure I had all my Windows applications, right? My Microsoft Office applications. And today we're all using Microsoft Office 365, you know, et cetera. So the two challenges, really, really quick, right? The two biggest challenges that we recognize, and again, our reason for being, was that as everybody moved to, you know, again, focusing specifically on the telecom space, as companies were moving to the cloud, they, you know, they, they, they all kind of had the same kind of aha moment, right? When they were, you know, when they were talking to their cloud provider. And that was really, what do I do with these pesky POTS lines, I guess, that don't necessarily really play very well with cloud-based solutions, right? And I say play very well, like, you know, although faxing out there is just, just something to think about, right? Faxing and SIP or VoIP haven't really been the most compatible solutions. It, it's not because the the, the the SIP provider or the VoIP provider has any better services, mostly standards based. It's, you know, because a fax machine is old technology and it, it only knows when to stop <laughs> when when it hears that, when it hears a pause. And of course, you know, you know, newer technology is, you know, packetized and there's lots of pauses, right? But more importantly, what do I do with these pesky POTS lines that are have government regulations? Right, the ones that have to be always up because you know people's live lively lives and, and their safety, you know, depend on it. Right, so think about you know fire alarm, uh, a burglar alarm, you know, emergency call boxes in in, in parking lots, um, elevators, those types of things. Right, things that have to work pretty much no, no matter what and can't be reliable. Or sorry, reliable can't be reliant upon the internet and or you know, um, local power. Right, so which is where kind of really why pot signs was always there. Second challenge, and we're not going to focus a lot on this one, but I'm just going to kind of throw it out there as, you know, because Grant, you'll, you, as we talk, you'll see that Epic's a pretty universal solution. The second um, challenge that we, we wanted to solve and was one we kind of found along the way, right? And, you know, as, as again, as we were kind of launching um, the Epic product and talking to all, all the customers, you know, we, we were under the impression that most companies had, you know, multiple ways to connect to the internet as they were moving to these cloud-based solutions. 
And as it turned out, you know, we found out that, you know, the large majority of companies really only had a single internet connection, right? Which was a big vulnerability in their, in um, the way they were able to, you know, to big vulnerability in their communication ability, you know, again, by having that single internet connection, right? And in fact, even, even the companies, a lot, a good portion of the companies that, that thought they had multiple internet connections, as it turned out, they only had that uh, a single, you know, same last mile connection, right? So um, that was a, the second thing we we decided to do, right? Hey, we've got this great technology, you know, not only can we replace these these pesky POTS lines and do them fully and compliantly, but you know what? We can also help the customers who only have a single internet connection, um, you know, get rid of that vulnerability by providing them high-speed access through, through our connection. Uh, so, Pots line, state of the state of pots lines, features and challenges, right? I, I um I'm gonna I'm gonna time myself on this so I don't get too 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 in the weeds on this. I know this is a it's a big topic to communicate, you know, a subject in the marketplace, but I'm sure everybody is familiar with the word or has used the word pots line over the years, right? Just in just in case, you know, just for posterity's sake, POTS is an acronym, right? It stands for plain old telephone uh, service. And uh, you know, as we know, <laughs> our our industry really tends to corner the market on acronyms, right? So I guess I'm going to also apologize in advance be for everyone on the call because um, I'm probably going to use quite a few of those different acronyms today. And unfortunately, or fortunately, maybe I'm going to actually maybe introduce a couple of new acronyms, right? That really apply to the next generation of you know pots replacement, right? So anyway, uh, pots. You know, I guess it, it, it is to me it is a kind of a special acronym, right? Not just because it's, um, you know, not not just because it's the, the the first one, right? But it's really it's really the, um, you know, it's the the, the, <laughs> the starting point of of all telecommunications, right? I mean, you know, think about it. You know, for how many it's been around for literally 150 years. How many, um, you know, services, viable services in 2023 can trace the roots all the way back to Alexander Graham Bell, right? So it's it's a service has been around a long time, you know. Um, and it's it's amazing it's still around, right? So uh, like I just said, you know, uh, POTS or plain old telephone service is really, you know, it's been the backbone of the whole telecom industry really for, you know, again, since since its inception, right? It's really only in the late 80s when we started to get digital communications. And then, you know, really at the, around the, the uh, turn of the um, of the century, if you will, or the millennium, where we started talking really or having viable solutions that avoid, involve, involve voice over IP, right? So I would say that, you know, if you think about it, Telephone servers or POTS lines, right, might actually be the um, the most disruptive and the most adapted technology really in the history of the world, and, and I mean that in a good way, right? You know, I mean, you know, let's <laughs> say fire, <laughs> the wheel, and then maybe telecom services somewhere in that order, right? Me personally, I think Uber was one of the greatest inventions of all time too, but it's <laughs> just just me. So, anyway, so again, POTS services are, you know, you'll also Again, you'll hear the word, the different words like um, analog services, copper lines, landlines, and you know, there's of course there's a whole bunch of other acronyms like TDM and PSDM. And I think what's what's important is that to, to really just the only important takeaway from this is that most of these most of these services are you know somewhat intertwined and you know really even inter interchangeable, right? Um, but the you know the I guess the, the important part of what's happening in those is that they're all undergoing right now they're all in the midst of a, a dramatic paradigm shift as to what you know kind of what's happened in the industry right so we'll talk a little bit about the paradigm paradigm shift and again i'm sure a lot of this is redundant so i'm going to go as quickly as i can through it but right so pots lines 150 year old technology several generations behind the technology we have today right today again, again digital wireless technology cloud-based technology VOIP and UKS again threw in a couple more of those acronyms. You know, why are we even really talking about it today, right? Why, why is it even is, is it even a viable conversation? And uh, you know, a couple of things, right? It's it's um, I guess first, you know, over the past dozen years, all of us have been involved in. You know, not only we've we seen, but you know, we've actually helped drive a wholesale migration away from these these you know landline based solutions to cloud based solutions. And because of this shift. We've seen a huge, you know, the world has seen a huge reduction in the demand for these copper lines, right? Their use cases for all intents and purposes, everything copper line was used for has now been replaced by newer, better technology. Um, you know, a couple of more fun facts. 25 years ago, you know, again, don't quote me in the exact amounts, but these are, you know, from, from FCC records. 25 years ago, there were about 250 million copper pots lines in use or copper copper uh, individual circuits um, in use, right? And today, they estimate, the FCC estimates there's, there's still 
somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 million. Now, I know that's a huge reduction, but that's still a whole heck of a lot of, of services, right? And they're still intact in because they're not able to easily migrate to that newer technology, right? So um, even though this new technology is, has taken over, all these great new technologies have taken over and less and less people are using copper services, you know, behind the scenes, the infrastructure is still intact. It, it, it has to be, right? It's, so you've got this unbelievable huge infrastructure that's now servicing about 90% less service than, uh, than it was in the past, right? Um, and, you know, again, importantly, a little bit of a segue, you know, all because of the, the the laws and regulations that have affected the telecom industry for many many years. You know, I won't get into the into the too much into the weeds on this, but this is it's it's sort of an important um, uh, feature, I guess, fact <laughs> that the phone companies, the ILEX, another no, there you go, another another acronym, or the incumbent local exchange carriers. You know, the phone companies, the guys who ran that that all that cable and, and owned that last mile. Right, that's a, a regulated industry, or at least it has been a very, it still is, but it's been a very regulated industry, right? And so it's been a requirement by the government that they maintain all of this copper infrastructure, right, across the country. Um, you know, and we're talking about, you know, millions and millions, maybe even billions of miles of, you know, of little, little copper, or of various sized copper wires, you know, in every street on telephone poles and really in, into, the, into the, the minimum point of entry of almost every building, right? So, you know, again, we have infrastructure, even though it's not in use, still really costly to maintain. Labor costs are rising. Circuits are, de are degrading. Again, in, you know, in California, we, we, we know this, you know, the average, the average age of this infrastructure is probably 60 to 70 years old. So in California, they say it never rains in California, but, but when it does, <laughs> it, it actually causes, not only does it pour, like the song says, but it causes a lot of problems with that copper infrastructure, right? You know, because again, it's, 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 it's old, it's aging, it's not very as well maintained as it could be, right? So again, the, I guess the, you know, the, the combination of these things really kind of gives us one of that, you know, voila, let's, the, the prices are going to go through the roof, right? Demand is, demand is, is way less, but the cost, of the, the size of the infrastructure is the same, still, still as big, and the cost to maintain that just keeps, keeps going up, right? So we see, uh, we've seen a giant increase in, in, in the cost of POTS lines. Uh, again, speaking in California terms, at and territory, we've seen, um, we've seen copper POTS lines, you know, tariff rates, you know, out of contract copper POTS lines. Um, and it's going to sound crazy, but we've seen like elevator lines, you know, tariff rates of eight hundred dollars per line. You know, in the in a world where the where the average UCAS seat is twenty is twenty dollars per seat, <laughs> you know, in a single copper pots line but in an elevator is eight hundred bucks. It's you know, it's kind of amazing, right? So um, again, just real. That's kind of the, the history, kind of how we got here, right? But the 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 question is really why why again? You know, if it's if it's old, if it's antiquated, why are we still talking about it, right? And it's you know, it's a, it's a super valid question, but the answer is really really simple, right? With all these changes, no matter how many of these changes have, have come and how, how great the technology has improved, right? There's still, again, millions, like I said, of these these copper pots or analog devices and applications that really don't, you know, don't work well with with cloud-based solutions. Or again, even more importantly, they're not allowed to to be on cloud-based solutions again because they're, you know, we call them fire life and safety lines because again, people's life and safety depend on them working. You know, again, no matter what, I guess is a, a good, great way of saying it. Right. If, if the phone company has done any one thing really well for, you know, for as, as long as anyone can remember, it's providing services that you kind of work under, you know, again, copper services that work under any circumstances, right? We used to say, you know, death taxes and dial tone. <laughs> so again, think of that in terms of alarms, elevators, anything that involves people's life safety. And then I don't really, I'm going to be careful how I touch on this one, right? But there's all, also that thing, um, there's that little subject matter. It seems to get a lot of publicity over the past couple of years, you know, uh, all over. You can't, you know, if you look at POTS replacement or POTS, POTS alternatives on, on the internet, you're going to see a whole lot of information, you know, fear, uncertainty, at bud, fear, uncertainty, and now right, another acronym. Um, and you know, maybe even a little bit of misinformation on, on kind of what's going on in the marketplace, right? But, you know, there's this, this discussion, and again, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not really supposed to, supposed to talk much about this, but, you know, there was FCC rulings back in 2019, you know, regarding, you know, regarding copper infrastructure. By the way, cop, copper infrastructure, not just, just POTS lines, right? And, of course, you know, if you read the Internet, it says that, you know, that by 2022, 
uh, by, by August of 2022, all the pot slimes are going to be gone. And of course, here we are in September 2023, and those copper pot slimes are, are you know, for the most part, you know, they're, they've, a lot of them have moved on, but most of them still have to be, be in service, right? But the, the, the takeaway on this is that it's not a Y2K type scenario. You know, the, the, you know, the copper pot slimes aren't going away overnight. They're not just going to go away tomorrow, you know, or, or today. They're, they haven't gone away so far, but they're... Um, they're gonna, you know, they are. They these these rulings really did happen, and we are gonna see a uh, <laughs> we are gonna see a uh, a lot of different, um, you know, we are gonna see the, the continued over over time, you know, change out of copper pot lines. So it was a lot on that subject. So alternatives, right? So again, first and first and foremost, you know, we're here to talk mostly about our our epic solution, right? Now it's where we're really gonna focus. But I do want to at least talk a little bit about about you know. Um, you know the, the granite's approach to to the pot slime space, right? Remember earlier I said that we were the largest aggregator of, of telecommunication services in America, right? We were uh, we're AT and T and Verizon's biggest customer, and what that what that's done for us is it's given us a lot of a lot of clout, a lot of leverage in the marketplace, especially with these big carriers, right? So we we have a multitude of solutions that we can provide to, to customers for pots, you know, for for moving away from the carrier direct copper pots lines. Um, and you know, basically, you see three of them. Three of them are pots replacement solutions that you see on the screen, right? But the first one is that Granite. Again, Granite is the biggest aggregator of copper pots of facilities in, in, in the country. And you know, one of the first, uh, sim most simple ways, and we can help a customer, is again with through aggregation of those copper facilities, right? You know, having those relationships with the carriers. We actually, even though they are carriers, are starting to decommission these services. We actually have agreements, in, in most cases, up to three years with the with the major ILEC carriers that we can continue to provide copper pot services at discounted rates. You know, through through those relationships, you know, to our customers, right? So the first and and simplest solution for our customer, and what a lot of our customers actually choose, even our really big enterprise customers choose, is to just move their services directly to copper pot lines, right? Or sorry, move them, keep those services on their current copper pot lines, but move those services to granite, right? It's a it's a simple, it's a very fast, easy, you know, simple, simple transition. You know, we, we just really are taking over the billing, but really what, importantly, what it does, it, it actually, um, it's a, it's a great first step in the migration path, right? It, save, it saves the money. Usually again, we can get, get them away from those tariff rates and get them locked in with, with, uh, you know, very, um, you know, with, with long-term, you know, again, up to, uh, long-term pricing that, to, you know, to protect them from, from price increases, but, um, you know, what it really does, it, like I said, it gives them the, the ability to make an informed decision, to take their time and really kind of decide how they're going to move forward in the future, right? So we do see a lot of big, now again, we don't think this is a good long-term solution, right? But what it is, for, the advantage of Granite is that we have this interim solution, right? So we can allow the customer to, to move over to our services. They can start saving money right away. They can consolidate all their billing from all the different carriers across the country onto a single bill, again, save money. And then we can work with them very closely to understand what their needs are and move them to the right solution. Uh, so again, uh, I'll just touch on the first two really quick, right? We do sell, we do voice over cable. You know, again, I said we were an aggregator with the carriers. We are also one of the largest aggregators with the, uh, with the cable providers across the U S right. So voice over cable is one of our solutions for, for, uh, for pots replacement. Um, again, if you're, if you're not familiar with voice over cable, most of us are, are you, if we still have a, any kind of a landline in our homes, this is kind of what, usually what we're using. Most people have again, if they're still using a landline, have gotten away from carrier, you know, AT&T and Verizon and carrier-based copper wires and gone to a, a bundled solution from the from the coax cable provider that's, you get your TV, your cable TV, your internet service, you know, and uh, and a, and a, a pot sign all over the same services, right? Um, you know, great service, great, good bundles, you know, all, awesome for, for homes. And sometimes it's okay for businesses. It's just that we don't use that. We won't, we can't use those again for, anything that's a mission critical type line that, re that requires you know again life safety type lines that have to be always up right because because one voice over cable is going to be powered by that modem locally right in the uh you know um in the you know somewhere in the closet it's it's got um and it's you know interestingly enough it while it's a always there's a cable provider in in the neighborhood pretty much every house it's not the same not the truth with businesses right there's not always going to be a, a coax cable running into it into every business right so it's not as easy to do, deploy you got atas again super quick right every voice over ip hosted ucas another another acronym supplier uses analog terminal uh, uses analog terminal adapters right 
and again, these are going to be, you, you know, this is a basically converting that voice over IP signal to a, you know, again, not to get technical, you know, 48 volt analog, you know, analog um, signal that, you know, an analog device can, can understand. Um, and it's, you know, again, done through what they call an analog terminal adapter. Um, again, very similar to voice over cable. Easy, more easily deployed, right? Because you you can do it on any kind of internet, but it's still an internet-based technology. It's still utilizing a, a just like that UCAS or cloud PBX solution. It's still accessing that cloud PBX, right? So it's not it's not on premise. It's it's got the vulnerability of the inter, of you know making sure the internet actually connects and the cloud PBX is working, right? So we um, we can use those things for non-life safety devices, right? If there's no light, no fire, life safety, no it has to work kind of situations, you know, and ATA is a good solution. And then of course our, our flagship product, Granite, uh, Granite's Epic product, right? We call it, actually it's called, we call it the Epic Edge. And this is, um, you know, this is, uh, you're gonna see a word down here, another acronym, but this is an important one. I said I'd give you a couple of new acronyms. It's a MFVN or a managed facilities based voice network. And I apologize for this one, but it's, it's kind of important in, in the world, right? What, and what this means is that, that Granite is certified under all of, under the most important national fire fire and life safety codes as being um this is kind of the new word for the for the public switch telephone network right this is the in the in the digital age in the fire life and safety community and mfvn means that you are as you are certified to be as re um as reliable um and as as available as you know as connecting you know directly to the psdn right which by the way we do actually connect directly to the psdn and again, and again, also, you know, we actually think because of the unique design of Epic, we actually, you know, not only are, are we com are we compatible and certified, again, certified by the biggest fire departments in the world for this this service, right? By them, but we also, um, uh, but um, we also can 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 literally, you know, service any kind of copper pots line out there. So. Um, important acronym we'll talk about it granted our flagship product any and all pots lines and especially we're going to use the epic solution anytime there's a fire life and safety lines which you know honestly for you know for the most part is most of our pots line replacement now right most companies have already kind of moved some of their less less uh um uh, no, I don't want to use the word important. Less um, life, sa <laughs> life, <laughs> life safety services over, over to a different service like the ones we talked about. So I'll take a quick little pause for a second. So um, when to consider Granite Epic. So I'm, I'm going to really focus on this this picture. You know, to me, if we if, if to give a presentation about Epic, about, you know, kind of what, you know, I think the important things are, are, you know, who we are, what we do, and most importantly, kind of why we're different, right? I think this, like I said, this picture to the right side of the screen. They say a picture can 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 paint a thousand a thousand words, and I think this one really really kind of does, right? So, um, Epic from a different from a from a you know product standpoint, you know, we are it says the screen says we're a direct replacement for existing analog lines and support a wider range a wide range of safety equipment, hard to replace legacy devices. But what we're really saying is that Epic Epic is a um, is a universal pots replacement device. Right, that can that can easily, efficiently, and very cost effectively replace any copper pots line or any or really any copper pots facility that that a company has. Right, so a lot of some of our um, other products out in the marketplace, you know, they're they're good at, at a couple of things, or um, and maybe not not as great as, as some of those things. But I'm not going to say anything bad about our competitors. We've known them all a long time. They're good guys. They're you know, in many cases, friends of ours. Right, but we've got a we've got some 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 differences in the epic solution right so we can replace any of these services um regardless of what it is with the same device right uh we think it's you know, i said a second ago right we, we have that mfvn certification that status of reliability by by the the biggest fire marshals in the country i'm sorry somebody somebody talking sorry um so we provide and we say we actually have more you know we're we're, we're they certify us as being as reliable as a as a carrier central office, we think we're actually more reliable than the carrier central office, right? Because you know a, a pots line, while it always works, when it doesn't work, it's only a single pair of copper wires, and it needs you know it could take days to get that repaired. Whereas we've got the, all that same reliability, and we're building in 
triple a triple redundant solution, right? That's got you see on the screen. Says we've got dual connect dual SIM cards connected to to wire the, the biggest wireless carriers, and we got a connection to the to the customers um, customers internet. And of course, you know it's fully self powered. We say a, a survivable system that's survivable no matter what. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more on the next slide. And um, you know, again, unlike having to unlike Voice over, you know, voice over cable solutions that have, you know, we have to look at where, where it's available. And even unlike some POTS line scenarios, again, like in today's marketplace, as they're decommissioning POTS because the carriers aren't running new copper at the facilities, we're available pretty much anywhere we can get a wireless signal that's suitable for, for, for use with voice, which is, you know, pretty much anywhere, anywhere in the U.S. and Canada right now. All right, so uh, real quick, left side of the screen, the stuff that we really do, that we, we focus on because, you know, what we were built for, right? We call them fire life safety lines, fire fire alarms, security alarms, call emergency call boxes. You know, think of those blue lights in parking lot phones, um, and then you know elevators, of course, right as well. And then all of these other things. And then I won't really touch much on this, but you know, we said we data connection for internet backup. You know, since we are using a 4G LTE solution, we you know I, I talked about this earlier. You know, the second thing we wanted to solve was what it, what do companies do for for 4G? You know, for um, extra, you know, secondary internet, and we can provide a 4G connection, you know, over the, you know, over, over the, those LTEs, those same LTE services, you know, automatically connect the customer, you know, to, to a secondary or, you know, or a failover internet connection. And of course, most importantly, well, or I, you know, very importantly, um, it's a fixed pricing. It's gonna, you know, it's, it's a, always a consistent pricing across the US, you know, we have our, our list prices and, you know, and we work through, through the agent channels to, to sell this to customer, you know, to sell this to customers, very consistent pricing across the US It's not going to change market by market, it will change, depending on the, the deployment, you know, how, how big the, the deployment is, how big the opportunity is, right, we'll see, you know, bigger discounts as, as we have more scenarios. But also, again, since we're not, we're not, it's not a traditional service, we're, you're going to see a little less, uh, less taxes and fees associated with the, the granted epic solution as well. Um, you know, I touched on most of this already, right? You said, again, that word MFEN replacement, right? Managed Facilities Voice Network. You know, we, we do we do kind of, this is an acronym, we do kind of drive home a lot, you know, and and, um, and when I say drive home a lot, this is a, a conversation that comes up a lot because we get involved in very technical conversations. You know, again, when we're replacing specialty lines or people's lives depend on it, there get, there get to be a lot of questions from the facility guys, the facilities guys, the, the fire marshals, those kinds of things. So we have these conversations all the time and it's really a huge advantage uh, for Epic because again, we have the certifications by the, by the biggest fire marshals in, in the country that we are, you know, a kind of a rubber stamp product for POTS replacement in, in pretty much any life safety environment. But quick specifications, right? Um, there, that's a picture of the device, you know, front, front, and, you can see front and back, right? There's a lot of antennas. We can, we have a few minutes at the end. We can talk about what, what they're, what they're for, but the, um, it can be, the, the devices can be either rack or wall mounted, right? So we, you know, you see the ears on it, you know, predominantly we see most of these devices are going to be in a, in, you know, in, Similar, very close to where the original phone Empo was from the phone company. So normally we'll see them, you know, wall mounted, you know. Um, but the key is really we all, all we need is to make Epic work. You know, we're, we're not dependent on where that old minimum point of entry was from the phone company, right? All we really need is since we've got it's a self-contained unit that's fully survivable. So all we really need is you know is access to uh, to clean AC power, the ability to connect to the customers inside wiring that's going to those endpoints, and then. Um, of course, you know, a, a suitable wireless signal, which, you know, if we have time at the end and anybody has questions, we'll talk about what that means. Cause I think it's, it, it's, that's, a, that's an important consideration, right? How do I, how do I make sure I get as good service on, on a, on a 4G LTE service as I would on a POTS line? And we, we can talk a lot about that. Uh, it uh, comes in two sizes, right? We, the technology is exactly the same regardless, but we, we sell it in both, we, sorry, we deliver it in both four port and eight port units. Again, you know, the real reason is, you know, if you know something, there's no reason to put those extra extra um, adapters, you know, analog adapters inside the device. If you're only going to have three lines, no reason to put it out of a, you know an eight port device, right? But it comes in uh, four ports and eight ports. It can handle up to eight analog line, up to eight analog specialty lines. And we're gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some other capabilities, right? Because when I say 
up to eight specialty lines. We're talking about only those fire life safety. And the, the reason that we really, this is a very, very sophisticated device that can, that can do a whole lot more than those, just those eight lines. But the reason for those eight lines is again, right back to that same thing. We always talk about compliance, 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 right? We, we want to, um, we want to make sure that we pass again, all of the strict standards of, you know, underwriter laboratories and the national fire protection agency. So we have to survive without power for 24, for a minimum of 24 hours in standby mode. And we have to survive for a minimum of eight hours under full voice load, which is really, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, um, you know, under full voice load means, you know, we're treating, we're treating those eight lines almost like a little, little mini call center, right? When in fact, those life safety lines are only calling out once or twice a day for, for test calls. So it's really, it's a very, very survival product. Again, the reason for that eight, eight line, that maximum eight lines is because of the power, is because of that power requirement. We can, you know, we can only certify that under that full load, you know, we're going to, we can run it for, for um, up to eight ports before we start, you know, not, not passing the power requirements. But in reality, we're going to survive for much, much more than 24 hours because uh, 24 hours in, in those eight hours, because again, it's usually being connected, not the voice lines, but to those specialty lines. Uh, again, everything, it, it, all, it's a fully inclusive solution. We not only include that, in, uh, again, that those lithium ion batteries to run it without power, but we include dual SIM cards and dual activated data plans. Right. And these are, again, just part of the service. It's there's no additional charge. It's, you know, everything with Epic is sold with Granite's Epic product is sold by, um, you know, on a, a full subscription basis, you know, per line. So all those those data, those sorry, those wireless data um, uh, plans are included. Right. No matter how much they use, we don't charge overage at all. Right. So as long as it's on the telephony side, there's never any charge for that wireless data. There's no charge for the device. It's all just a, a thing, you know, meant to be a. a an easy replacement for the POTS lines, you know, paid the same way, except again, you know, we think more reliably and, you know, for less money and, you know, with less, less uh, ancillary, you know, fees and those types of things. Right. Um, and again, you know, we're right back to, you know, the technology, right. Very advanced technology. We're monitoring the device very closely. Uh, all calls, every single line is fully what we call end to edge encrypted, right? So all calls and, and faxing, whether that call goes out on one of the LTE networks or uh, on, on the internet is fully encrypted end to end. And you know, what that means is that, you know, again, people can't, it's, you know, it's impossible really to, <laughs> to I mean, you know, we have very, very strong cybersecurity um, uh, guidelines that, that we follow. So it's, you know, you can't really hack an Epic device, right? You know, you know, we've got these in some of the most secure locations in, you know, in the world. We've got these, you know, with the, with the, with the federal government, with the Department of Defense. So very, very highly, um, highly secure. And again, it also means, you know, for faxes and, and, and calls and, and different modems, you know, we're going to be P, both PCI compliant for any, any transactions that involve, you know, credit cards or debit cards, any financial transactions, and we're 100% HIPAA compliant as well, right? Uh, and we're kind of pushing up against the time. Um, but this is, I guess the, the, the key is, you know, again, I gave you the differentiators and the different products we sell, right, or that we can provide a customer, you know, move their POTS lines to, from the carriers to Granite and save money, voice over a cable, analog terminal adapters, Epic, you know, the Epic Edge uh, solution, right? But th this is really more of a, a um, for me, this is, again, a very, very important slide, right? Because this is the differentiator between us and every other um uh, really in anybody else in, in the POTS replacement space. And, and again, I don't, I don't want to get, I, I can get technical. And as you guys can tell, I, I, I get excited and I like to talk a lot and probably too fast. So again, my apologies for some of that, but this is a great, it's a great picture, right? Because this is, there's, there's two key differentiators and I'm going to make them as, as, as simple as possible. Two key differentiators that really make Epic unique in, in, in the marketplace, right? One is that we've got, um, it says here, so you see class five intelligent router. So class five, that just means carrier grade, right? So that's a, a you know, class four is a, is a traditional, you know, you know, PBX, like a, you know, voice over IP or UCAS system, right? And class five are carrier grade features. Really no difference other than the carrier feature means you can do things like star codes, right? It's not meant to be processed by a PBX. It's meant to go to a pot, you know, to a, to an analog device somewhere. Um, and we, we, what's, uh, I'll summarize this by saying, if you look at this picture, you see what's missing in this on every, every presentation we ever see in, in, in the telecom and technology space, right? The, the main part of the picture, usually anyway, is a cloud. And if you notice on this picture, what's missing is that cloud. We don't have a cloud on this picture, right? 
and that's not because we don't use the cloud, right? Epic does have, you know, again, we do have a, a full, you know, again, class four and class five um, uh, soft soft switch PBX up, up in our cloud. And in fact, again, you know, with Granite's network, we've got multiple data centers all connected with the, you know, the best, you know, connectivity between those data centers, geographically distributed, you know, uh, very carefully monitored. So, you know, we, we, we have a very robust network behind the scenes, but, Again, you know, with when it comes to remember, we built this for compliance. And when it comes to fire life and safety lines, right? Anything that's getting its information from from the cloud require is one, it's got a vulnerability that that cloud PBX is actually working. But two, it's got to get to the cloud, right? It's got to it's got to travel to that cloud to to get the, that that dial tone, right? And we, you know, again, we learned a lot in those four or five years while we were doing this, and we have a super smart um, CTO, right? Who you know, and founder who who figured this out that that we need to take all of those vulnerabilities out of Epic that the other, the other companies have. And we so we did two things, right? One, even though we have this cloud, we took a computer motherboard and inserted it into every Epic device. We call it onboard intelligence. And again, we don't have to go into the details of how that works. But what we do is we run a local, a local copy or a local instance of our cloud-based PBX right inside the Epic box. So that means that we're survivable. You know, we have the battery backup that survives without power. But now we've got the cloud PBX. We can survive without even connect connectivity to our cloud PBX because it's right inside the, the box, right? Second thing we did was we private peered with the with the wireless carriers, right? So again, we're not using the Epic to reach out. We're not using the wireless carriers to reach out to our cloud PBX, right? We brought the cloud PBX into the box. Then we private peered, so we're on network with the the, the biggest um, wireless carriers in the world. So as soon as as soon as we lock onto a tower, you know, Epic Epic. The Epic phone, you know, connects to the Epic box. It's not using the internet. It's right inside the closet. We lock onto a tower, and through again this this peering uh, these peering relationships and this private pro, you know these, these signaling pr protocols, we're you know we're connected to that carrier on net and all their data centers, and we're literally you know there by law core connected to the PSDN. So this is again, if there's one you know picture that, that can tell a thousand words, you know, from a compliance standpoint, you know, this is really the one, right? We are. This is what we're for most. Um, I know, it, and some of it sounds kind of boring, but it's really what customers are looking for, right? Prove to me that this can work in any circumstance. Uh, so benefits, right? We we talked about most of these things. Compatible with virtually any device. Doesn't matter matter what it is. You know, we don't have to drill down too much with with customers and questions because we know that we've tested with those devices and they work. You know, we've tested with over over 300 fire panels. We work with some of the biggest, um, you know, central monitoring stations in in the country, right? So we're really good at that stuff, but we can put any any device on it, right? Um, you know, again, it's very intelligent. We're monitoring 24-7, 365, right? So we will know about a, a trouble for a customer, you know, long, hopefully long before a, trust, a, a customer knows about the trouble, right? And also, um, you know, again, we're also, you know, we're monitoring 24-7, 365, and, we, you know, we can, we're going to literally, you know, set, up, set the tickets. You know, we're going to open a trouble ticket and repair it before the customer even sees it. Right, but that monitoring is really is, is really important too. We're watching this device very closely because we got two wireless comp you know, the wireless cards and we got one um, and we got an inter internet connection, right? And we, we always want to make sure because those those fire life safety calls always have to go through. So we're monitoring all the different metrics, you know, internet based metrics, you know, or sorry, not internet, but well, you know, uh, um, latency, jitter, all of those types of things, and we're always choosing the right way, the right path, the right call, call path to get that call over that's going to complete the call, right? And then again, we're monitoring it so closely that, because they have to work no matter what, that even if there's a problem with those lines and we fail over from one medium, and again, there's three to the next, we're not going to drop that call, right? And of course, you know, again, um, single bill for all locations, you know, the beauty of Granite, we're, we're nationwide, we've got 2,500 employees, we've got a reach to do installations, you know, pretty much across all, the, all of the U.S. and Canada, and uh, um, yeah, it's there's a, a we think there's a lot of benefits, right? You know, again, we believe it's the most compliant solution, the most versatile solution, and really the most technology technology advanced solution, right? So, you know, you saw the picture earlier. We said there's a lot of advanced functionality in the device. We're not going to talk a lot about that today, but you know, we do have beyond POTS lines replacement inside the Epic device. There's a ton of additional technology that can solve other other communication issues that we would love to chat with you guys about at, at a future time. Uh, but these are uh, these are the big ones here, right on the right hand side of the screen. This, this my, oh gosh, I just lost my screen for a second. Um, 
compliance, build, building closure compliance. Okay? We meet all the NFPA 72 and MFEN uh, scenarios. We we're certified by the two biggest fire departments in the world, the fire department of the city of New York and uh, the California, uh, California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. Protection, Cal Fire. So the two biggest fire and most scrutinizing fire departments in the world have certified us, rubber stamped us across the board. Uh, we're PCI compliant. Again, I said earlier for financial transactions, HIPAA compliant. Uh, we have E911 capabilities on every line, right? Each line can have its own, in, is, will have a full feature set and can have individual E911. And, and, and again, I know we're pushing up on the time here, but it's E911 is sort of a something I like to kind of chat about also because you know, pot signs can have can have 911, but it's you know you see on the screen here, right? <laughs> we say down the bottom, pot sign can have 911, but it's very limited into the information that you can push to the PSAP from you know from the carrier central office, right? So remember, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna emulate that that functionality of the carrier central office, but provide addition, you know, more you know additional call pass, right? A triple redundant solution, but also the advanced, you know, that same to the end user. It seems just like a pot sign, but behind the scenes, we're bringing, we're still bringing all of that brand new technology into play, so that each line can actually be equipped with its own distinct E nine one one location identifiers, right? So, I guess what I'm saying by that is, you know, if, if I've got a line going to somewhere in a, in, in in a building, I can get very very granular where exactly where that line is calling from, right? Right down to the cubicle level, like you know most uh, you know some of the UCAS solutions. So think of that as a the reliability three times the reliability of a POTS line <laughs> works without power, works without internet, you know, just works. But also, I can still give all that critical information. Um, you know, again, you know, this is a sort of sort of self-explanatory stuff, but we're, we're you know worthy of a, a you know a couple of quick review, right? So what you know what's what's great about a pots line, right? It works it works even when the power's out. You know, again, you know, big power failure, you know, power outage situations across the country. We've all seen a couple of those, right? The one thing that always works is going to be that carrier that carrier pots lines, right? And that's why it's been around so long, and it's you know kind of um, you know been the you know been that industry standard. Um, but you know, Epic, we we again we solve that problem. We've got a built-in battery, built-in you know, battery backup that survives for a minimum of 24 hours, just like the same regulations as that copper pots line, and and of course a lot more, a lot more feature functionality, right? Pots lines can do, and again, right? Some of these pots alternatives don't do alarms and, and, and faxes and very well, and some of these things very well, right? We're we're compatible with all of these devices, right? Across the street, uh, across the scenario. Um, you know, pot sign hardwired reliability, really great as long as there's not a problem with that hardwire, right? We offer hardwired reliability, except except we don't have to worry if, if there's a line, if, if a line's cut and you know losing that, that single call path because we are providing three call paths for the for the customer. So again, I think that's that's pretty pretty substantial. Uh, disadvantages of the copper pot signs, right? It's aging, it's hard to maintain, right? Um, we know we know that to be true. The, the phone companies know that to be true. And you know the advantages of Epic is that we're you know we're we're investing in these new technologies and, and you know again getting a, understanding it that's hard to, to maintain. We're moving on to different solutions, right? Um, you know, again, depending on who the carrier is, whether it's in contract, what the tariffs are, what type of line is, pot lines can vary like crazy. I mentioned eight hundred dollar pot lines, but the average price across the US right now is about ninety dollars for, for a pot line plus, you know, um, and you know, we offer um, um, consistent pricing regardless of what marketplace they're in. Usually and usually savings, you know, of, of thirty percent. You know, our, our customers are big customers that so are pretty savvy already, but we do see savings at ninety percent, right? Uh Pot lines, you know, pot lines is very hard to, to 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 get new pot lines. You know, people have to pay to, to get copper place now. So, you know, we can we can worse, you know, anywhere we can get access to even a minimal wireless signal and the customer's internet, we can deploy Epic literally in minutes, honestly, right? Um, and again, so just last real quickly, right? Again, meant to be, you know, meant meant to be a um, you know, a carrier based uh, replacement. Easy, easy, easy deployment, you know, put the device anywhere copper pot lines are needed. If we have access to, to, to AC power, because then again, we, you know, just to run the device when it, when it has power and we can, obviously we have the battery to fail over when, when it doesn't. And, um, uh, we can really install the Epic pretty much, pretty much anywhere. And, you know, for any service, right. So this is just a quick picture of, of what's, in, what's included, how it looks like, you know, 
this would be a wall mounted solution and we plug into the power and you see over here there's a <laughs> this is you know the, the i guess the, the point of this picture is that we we use a, an old old-fashioned even though there's super high tech technology inside the device we use an old-fashioned amphenol connector on the telephony side of the device so that when our technicians get out in on site they can they can they're gonna have a full kit to to uh, install um and connect to the to, you know the customers in, inside wiring or services really anything they come out come across in those closets they're going to be able to um they're going to be able to accommodate so i have rambled quite a bit i apologize i'm sure i missed a lot of things but i want to leave a couple of minutes for some q a and again thank you guys for uh, for hanging in there and listening to me um and i'll turn it back over to you guys all right, looks like we had a, a couple questions come in, so let's hit on those real quick. Um, so, Mike, what would you say um, are the characteristics of the ideal Epic customer? Yeah, so, uh, you know, that's that's a, um, a, <laughs> it's a cliche for me to say it's a great question, but that's a great question. You know, the, the, the thing that, um, the thing about Epic is that, right, pretty much everybody, you know, we, we say that we're a, 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 a you know, the, the when we started Epic, we said that we were um, we were a product that didn't compete with anybody's technology. It just helped complete those those technology solutions, right? Because, you know, everybody every customer has some of these same challenges. Like I said earlier on, right? These these challenges on moving to cloud solutions are, are everyone. So we were like the perfect companion um, product that can that every customer needs because they all have, everybody has a fire alarm for the most part. Everybody has a burglar alarm. Most a lot of companies have elevators. You know, many of them have modems and. When, you know, even some of them, and, and a lot of them have faxing. By the way, we do not not for today, but we do fax. We we've kind of cracked the code on faxing that no one else has either. So I guess the, the answer really is Sean that the everybody the beauty of this is everybody's a, a potential customer, right? We get to check that box that you know it's a, the the perfect storm of opportunity. Everybody needs something is going to be be faced with this. Um, but the high density of pot lines you're going to see are going to be like in um, let's call it. Uh, property management type solutions, right? Um, yeah, yeah, hotels, uh, business complexes, right? Multiple locations, multiple, you know, uh, campus environments, uh, schools, schools, um, uh, campuses, part, you know, again, malls with parking lots, right? They have blue lights all over. There's really, it's it's really amazing how many, um, how many opportunities there are for Epic solutions out there. And again, one other area that's kind of really, really big for us besides property management is gonna be the medical, or sorry, the, the healthcare field. Right, they still use a tremendous amount. You know, hospitals still use a tremendous amount of POTS lines. They've got red phones, red emergency phones, all throughout the hospitals. They're they're using tons of fax machines, and their machines all are all backed up. You know, all backed up on the internet with uh, all, when if the internet's down with POTS lines. Right. Okay. So let's say I'm located in a different state. Uh, do the California Fire and Fire Department of New York uh, certifications apply to other states as well? Yeah. So, um, and I'm, I want to answer this question. You know, again, um, without being too without being too technical, but um, but a little bit technical, right? So we we by we built this device again to be a managed facilities based voice network, right? So we went through those. We don't really need certification. We are actually a telecom a telecom solution, right? That's considered to be a carrier central office. Right, so we got this, and and we went through the certification so that we could prove out to the two biggest fire departments in the world that we don't have to actually be held to the, to the standards of uh, of what the the uh, fire. So there's you know it's a whole competing marketplace you know in, in the fire a uh, fire alarm space, selling digital communicators right. They're single use devices. You know they work for one 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 a single device works for an ele for a fire fire panel and there's ones that work for elevators right. We didn't want to be in that specialty lot scenario right that required those laws. We wanted to build something that worked just like a carrier central office that worked on the other side of that DMARC block, which is what what we did. So in essence, we are um we are. Uh, uh, you know, we're kind of rubber stamped as a telecom product to be used anywhere in, in the country, U.S. and Canada. But we went through that, those certifications because, you know, again, sometimes when you're when you're in a new when you're kind of inventing a new space, if you will, you get a lot of questions from those fire marshals. So we wanted to take it to the next level and get those sort of, you know, proactively get those certifications. So we spent a couple of years with the two big, you know, again, we picked the two biggest. We're working with uh, the city of Chicago also. We picked the two biggest and the two most discriminating and we got got um actually got them to give us certifications. So 
the answer, the, the, the direct answer is usually that's uh, that's enough for the, for the local fire marshal in the other state. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we have uh, time for just one more here. Um, I'm just going to combine this into into one kind of combo question. You can nail it out here. Um, so we had a question about dual connections being implemented and also using it in, um, you know, in concert with something like uh, SpaceX. Uh, so, okay, so the, the connectivity, right? Um, you know, again, so we are, like I said, right, we're, we're, we're uh, we've got dual SIM cards and dual, and dual activated data plans, right? So we're private peered currently with Verizon and and T-Mobile, meaning we're on net with those guys right now. And we're actually, we're just a couple of days away now actually from being with, with AT&T as well. So we're gonna have all three of the main carriers included in our device, you know, we'll have two SIMs, you know, the best, the, the best connectivity. Um, and again, we're actively monitoring both of those networks and we can have a, and again, we're going to have a tertiary connection to the customer's internet, just like, just like the, um, any, you know, any voice over IP solution would work. Right. Uh, so again, a triple re redundant solution that, um, let me show you something pretty interesting here. I'm going to go back a slide. Well, maybe I can't hang on. Just a picture of the devices, but yeah. So when we connect, um, so we can we can connect to the customer's internet, you know, to get again not non intrusive connection, you know, kind of a guest VLAN, guest <laughs> guest, you know, we're not gonna we don't we're gonna we're not gonna intrude on their network at all, right? It's really just a, 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 an internet connection for that for that third connection. And you see these Wi Fi antennas in the back, right? And what are these for? The the big ones are our 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 antennas for the four G, which by the way can be you know again if we need better signal we can you know, put external antennas directly connected but those wi-fi antennas allow us to connect to 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 wire to wireless networks so we if we don't have easy access to you know i'm talking about like that spacex scenario um if we don't have easy access to uh to a cat5 or a wired internet connection and the, and the customer has an internet connection that's being delivered via via wi-fi signal you know hotspot we can actually use those wi-fi antennas to to connect to the to the customer's internet as that third call path with those antennas so yeah, we pretty much got a, most of it, hopefully most of it covered. Okay, awesome. Well, I think that's um, just about everything we have time for today. Um, so before we go, I'd like to thank Granite for sponsoring today's event, as well as uh, you, Mike, for joining us today on this informative discussion. Um, as a reminder, the seminar will be available on demand starting tomorrow. So please feel free to come back and review. Have a great day and thank you so much for attending. Bye everybody, thanks so much.